so that's our deck dinner. We're having the pandoro with some blueberries. And James is having chili. He likes that. Uh, uh, this chili is like you should not look or something. <laughs> it's awesome. We could make a chili shack or something like should that. I? And we get a little bit of money yeah? together. A chili shack? Well, house? Uh, we should. You know, like I'd handle the busing. <laughs> yeah. the only thing I'd be able to do. And, and everyone would lead outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody yeah. will come. Because yeah. it's, it's Canada. <laughs> a deck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A great big deck with well, some chili you could, bowls. You could make it like a celebratory thing, you know. Yeah. Like some people like, uh, you know, diving underwater, and then sure. so you go. Yeah, out and, we could yeah. have it near some uh, Arctic cool sort of water to dive into, after, and then have a hot tub before. You'd have to yeah. do it before because you'd get serious cramps, I think. And if you, but after eating. But uh, yeah, you know, just make it mm -hmm. a challenge. Can you survive our yes. deck? experience in the middle of winter <laughs> so you have it a up cold, in edmonton cold you know? water to jump into and yeah. then then you come back and it's a big yeah a retreat you do the whole canadian experience something like that you, you know like make it a tourist dating. thing make it a tourist thing you mm -hmm. know like come up from phoenix instead of having the snowbirds go down there mm -hmm. have snow but real <laughs> snowbirds come up here you know, yeah. like see if you can survive All we have to winter. do is charge them more <laughs> yeah, for the paint, and then it'll be valuable. Yeah. You know, if we just raise the price up and up. Yeah, and save money on the heating inside. Yes. You don't have any chili, you know, 15 above. Centigrade, not, not Fahrenheit for anyone watching south of the border and not quite Mexico away. So, the Pandoro, as it turns out, is really quite plain. It's, yeah, but it's good. check it out. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, it's setup. It's like a sponge it. cake, sort of. You know, very. Um, it's not very sweet, so it's barely sweeter than bread, really. It's light on everything but air. So. And maybe brandy or something. I haven't looked at the ingredients, but wow, did it ever smell boozy? It when smelled, I but it didn't really taste no, it. No, it doesn't Because taste that believe me, I taste the alcohol. Because I, I suppose the alcohol would be cooked off. I hope so. But it's still the flavor is there. And uh, so I thought, you know, what would be, it comes with a little package of icing sugar, which you can tell I put some on James's, but yeah, this piece already has taken Oh, you a long put that on, eat. that wasn't on it. It comes in the package. There is, oh, okay. So you have a little package of icing sugar, you're supposed to dust okay. it on top when you take yeah. this out. So yeah. I was looking at this and I'm like, how do I open this up? Well, you open the bottom. Yeah. That's what I did. Um, and. It turns out that's the best way to do it, I think. It looks so this is a lovely gift, though. You go packing this in one hand to a yeah. get-together and yeah. a bottle of wine in the other, perhaps. And I think anybody would welcome you into their house. Yeah, we don't have shares in Aurora, the company. So this no. is a legitimate uh, plug. Yeah, we, well, don't, not really a plug. we don't make any money for any anything re products. review or no. anything. James is Mormon hot chocolate. Mormon hot chocolate. Where does it come from in Salt Lake City? I can't remember. I think so, so. Provo, Ogden, Moroni, Nephi, what? Lehi. Yeah. There are such places uh, that are um, named after uh, Mormon. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'll i bring the bag out for you again if you like. Yeah. So you can give a proper review of it. But if anyone's watching from Moroni, Lehi, and uh, Nephi, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, you know, do they say a big shout out or what do they say? Just, I don't know. Hiya. I don't know, but James likes your hot chocolate. Yeah, so it's thank awesome. You. Thank you. Somebody must have been cleaning out there. Chocolate making mm. facilities? Mm. No, like, I guess eventually they would have little root cellars or whatever. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like from their year supply or something like that. Oh, yeah, I see what you're and saying. And then they'd be like, oh, we didn't use this up. And it yeah. goes to the food bank. Or, yeah, and thank some, you. Some, sometimes this stuff is borderline stale. Hasn't killed us yet, hasn't even come close. So. This one, this Pandora, did get a, uh, did was you not get expired. A, uh, hmm. Some sort of a impact off of something recently. No, okay. No. We'll just, turkey. I think. Yeah. Anyway, I was cooking turkey with the dogs. And I cooked it inside, where I don't normally do that, and I won't uh, do that again. Yeah. Normally but I cook it outside. But you were getting a legitimate food I poisoning I was, symptom. Yeah, uh, I thought I had the flu, but James told me it was food poisoning, and well, it was after, right after I cooked it. That's my so, best guess. I've um, only had bad food poisoning once in my life. It's got to have been food poisoning. I used to eat uh, a lot of canned seafood, and I tried to mix it up. It tended to be tuna and 
salmon and stuff like that. I'm a food preparer. I'm a lousy cook. I like to think I'm a reasonably good preparer. I can't say I'm a great food preparer. But uh, so I tried to stretch out, and I knew I liked shrimp. So still do. I got to admit, uh, you know. But uh, I don't like eating the idea of eating stuff. But you know, what the heck. But anyway, uh, I'm not accustomed to cooking that sort of stuff. Yeah. And handling it, like yeah, I yeah. don't, I'm not used to that at all. I don't cook it inside. I cook it outside usually. I plug into the outside heater with a um, slow cooker, mm. or else I cook the meat on the fire pit. Yeah. But I didn't for this time. So, like, well, I suppose I could have done it in the fire pit. I don't know if that would have been really safe for the dogs. Uh, but the thing was, it was a turkey. I didn't know it was the first time I was given a turkey, and. Um, I should have picked the ham or the chicken because those I can fit in the slow cooker but I didn't know what to pick and I was like okay turkey you know and then I got it home and I'm like I can't fit this in the slow cooker so I could have cut it up beforehand but then that would have been a lot of handling too gruesome anyway and yeah so anyway I don't know for sure that I had food poisoning but James thinks I did yeah so with the the first time I had shrimp I made sure to drink the juice, right? Mm. <laughs> because, um, you know, I don't like wasting stuff. You know? yeah. That Not was probably idea. your worst mistake, was drinking that juice. Well, there were two mistakes. First of all, I should have... You three, should have read the I should have read the instructions. Yes. And then the second thing is I should have rinsed it off. And, you know, I, I believe in something like that. When they say rinse, rinse thoroughly, right? Yeah. And then I drank the juice. And, you know, what happened was... I wasn't really experiencing things spinning this way, like a film going by, and it wasn't this way. It was this way, yeah. kind of half and half. And you described your symptom. I was as spinning. Being, so, um, like I was spinning. Pictures were spinning mm -hmm. in this, like not a circle, more like a. It's like a di going at a diagonal. Yeah, it was really diagonal awful. axis. And anyway, so I'm laying there, and I was, I had a hard time getting up just to mm -hmm. make. James the most basic things to try to get. I didn't know she was suffering. And so... I think I would have taken her to a hospital. So I, no. I was laying there and I was thinking, just picture snow, picture snow, because I'm thinking if that's spinning, then it won't matter, and that helped. So, anyway, we're talking about a few shows before I start reading the second part of this. Uh, Bread Factory was a comedy sort of series about... Um, anyway, you know, it was boring. There were a few funny jokes, and I tried to remember them so that I could talk, so I could mention them. But it, it, it's really not worth seeing. Uh, there were a few people in it, like Spike from um, Buffy was in that, so it was nice to see him again. He's Very active. He's getting work. Yep. And, he should have been continuously employed in high yeah. profile stuff. Good actor. So it was basically, there was uh, an artist group that were a couple people that did some bad art and they were getting all this huge funding and other artists weren't getting funding and it was total crap and um, the mayor had some involvement with some um, educate some testing facility or something and so they were getting funding so it was all about corruption really and um, they were trying to talk about it in a uh, light sort of comic way right um and it's important that people do talk about this about arts funding corruption just both because yeah. um, well arts funding is corruption as far as i'm concerned thank you i don't know how it fell down it's not even windy i have no idea it. well it's it's dirty it's very dirty so i put it uh, upside down anyway so um Cold Dark Season 5. Which one was that? Oh, that was the one set in. You talk about that one while I'm cleaning off the case. I don't know that much about it. I was able to, to locate it around 1800. Yeah. The cool thing is, they were saying, turn to the century. And I'm going, well, it doesn't look like the, uh, 2000, and it doesn't look like 1900. Okay. So I'm figuring it was around 1800, turn of the century then. Yeah. I didn't really catch much of it. On hey, a lot of British, that was a movie or a TV series. It was a TV series, and okay. we watched well, a couple British parts TV of it. Well, British TV series are bored. much better than their movies. 
Their movies yeah, are really, 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 off, really wow. bad stuff. The, Worse than Hollywood. The British stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we don't Especially tend the to stuff like for it. guys. Yeah. It's terrible. I mean, the acting's a bit better, but... Mm. A bit better than the American stuff. Absolutely. They, especially the women. Women, oh, the women. You can have women in England who have looks, um, and they've actually had stage experience. Yeah. Right? Whereas Hollywood, they've been cast... I think the old thing is they were cast, and they were, you know... Uh, you know, they... I think directors and producers went out to restaurants to see if they could find people oh. bussing and oh, yeah, uh, waitressing and whatever. Oh, you can also talk about The Command, which we watched two nautical themed movies, The Command and Mary. I enjoyed Mary a lot because I really like, uh, what's her name? We watched Emily. those back to back. It just worked yes, out that way, right? Or yeah. did you program it? Nope. There I didn't are. plan it. It just happened. Okay. Now, what was the merry one about? I'm just glitching. I'm not good at... It was a haunted ship. Yeah, I think that was a Marie Celeste kind of like updated. Yeah. But I gotta say, it was kind of spooky. I think I watched all of it, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, I find ships somewhat claustrophobic. And it's not because I haven't been exposed to them. I've been... I've done weeks... But yeah, uh, Emily Mortimer oceans. might be my favorite actress. Is she did a good name? job. Uh, I think so. Like that. Mm. She did a good job. It's, mm. I mean, it's not a huge, big challenge for her because it's not like something you'd nominate for a new Oscar. No, I think she could do anything. Yeah, exactly. She's awesome. I think she did it more for money. Mm. So it's a horror movie. Don't expect too much from it. You know, don't be okay. expect to be intellectually challenged. No. Just expect your nervous system to be somewhat challenged. The command. Okay, that was the one about the. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to say the Soviet submarine. My memory of the. I even knew the name, the Kursk. Mm. You know, named after a wonderful place, I think, in the Soviet Union. Uh, yeah. I consider Putin Soviet Union Mark 2.0. I understand, not Soviet Union necessarily like. Um, so they, it's a weird place because they've got the Kursk, a magnetic anomaly in the region, right? Mm. So I guess you can't use compasses very uh, reliably there. Mm. We'll see what happens. I think it's, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, maybe magnetite or something like that. So that's yeah. another good reason why we watch these two together. Just weird because the Mary was Bermuda Triangle-ish. Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. So like it'd be around Bermuda south of there. I think the Sargasso Sea is located there. A lot of things have disappeared there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there is something like an abyssal plain there. It's not really a French. Uh, and uh, some people have conjectured that the big bubbles of uh, gas come up from the sea bottom. Area. But it's not above the mid-ocean ridge. And uh, I don't know, maybe there's a big crack in the surface. Or maybe the surface is very, very thin there. Mm. So both movies, ships, spooky stuff, people die, and um, interesting natural phenomena. Yeah, well the spookiest thing about uh, this uh, Kursk thing, the other thing I mentioned about Kursk okay. is, I, as I recall, not that I was around, it was close, but the, I think it was the 1944, something like that, maybe, I don't think it was the early 43, the world's greatest, not really greatest, but biggest tank, because no battle's great. Uh, the world's biggest, well, it was great because it was a huge loss for the uh, uh, the German Wehrmacht, the German uh, military. The uh, It was the world's biggest tank battle then, up to that point in time, and I think it's still the world's biggest uh, tank battle. I think the Soviets had twice the men, twice the materiel, and twice the armed uh, troop transport uh, vehicles provided half of them apparently by the United States and uh, the United States really won World War II even on the Eastern Front so uh, but the, this is the Kursk thing and my memory of it was it happened in Soviet times because the Russians were just hiding everything they weren't cooperating and saving these men that got caught underneath the uh, 
Barents Sea, I believe it is, it'd be north of Norway, north of uh, Arkhangelsk, I think is how you'd pronounce it, and Murmansk in uh, the former Soviet Union, and uh, soon to be again, if it isn't already, the Soviet Union reconstituted. And, uh, you know, I was going, you know, I checked and I said 2000, and uh, that's when the incident happened, is the doc kind of a fake documentary, right? A yeah. dramatized documentary sure. is a better way to put it. You know, I yeah. guess that is a good way to put it. Yeah, because I don't want to say it's faked up or anything. No, like it's a quick. movie, but it's about sometimes, real stuff. Sometimes and it's the things are faked historical, up. Pretty historical, whatever. Like the Canadian uh, official or whatever on the Titanic, who was uh, made to look like a villain, and he was based on someone in real life. It's absolutely shameful that the uh, what was what his Hollywood name? James, Com yeah, James yeah. Cameron or whatever. You know, like there, there should have been money sent to his, uh, you know, uh, the mm -hmm. his, uh, descendants and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. And, you know, anytime that movie appears, there should be this huge disclaimer and apology right. you know, before and after, you know, like this is a dramatization and we made a mistake here. I don't believe in censoring the thing, you know, stuff like that, but, uh, you know, things that are bound to give offense should be framed by, and that's a good uh, left-wing term, uh, good bad left-wing term framed. So I'm trying to make it explicable to uh, some uh, putative left-wingers out there who just, they're, they've got so much cant in their vocabulary, you can barely understand them, you know, it's easier to understand Yucatec Mayan. Uh, and I, I've been there, I've actually uh, studied Yucatec Mayan, and I actually did pretty darn good at it. So that, that's not my own opinion. The, okay. That was the opinion of the instructor. Anyway, Kursk, uh, Kur, uh, the Kursk, uh, you know, like Putin, it would have been Putin who was in power. See, you know, like, uh, I knew who Putin was, but I didn't know exactly what he was going to be like, uh, the skunk that he ended up being. So uh, this thing was doing some sort of suspicious stuff. What was the story in the movie? You no, know, it might have been made up for the movie. But Howling lumber. Howling lumber under, under the Barents Sea. <laughs> You got to do that surreptitious. Understand, this is a nuclear submarine. You know, the yeah. whole thing about a nuclear submarine is it's surreptitious. It's, you can stay under for a long time. You can't. You, they don't have to come up for air uh, very much. So, uh, or to get fuel, uh, more importantly. But uh, yeah, hilarious. So Putin was already doing a skunkiness. Uh, this was like maybe a, a little. Well, it's less than a year into his brain. Uh, so. Uh, anyway. It's a pretty good movie, well handled, and I, th I think it's uh, topical because you can see how bad the Soviet Union Mark II was right from the get-go once uh, Putin started reconstituting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I'm not going to tell what happens to the guys because I don't want to spoil it for you. But, uh, Father Brown season seven is really dumb. Um, but I love it. Okay, so it's James campy. loves watching it. It's campy. I. I love but watching it is mysteries, kinda dumb. so I'm gonna watch every mystery. But this one actually is not worth watching. It's pretty dumb. Yeah, it's really dumb. I love sleeping to it, but I don't mind. Like every to every it. single story, I came up with a better mystery for it. Like you actually figured it out early in the day. Is that what you're saying? No, I figured out a better story than okay. what they like. Okay. That's pretty sad. Yeah. When you're not caught up in the story, you're figuring out better. I'm ones, figuring, right? yeah, because their stories are so stupid. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this could mm -hmm. happen, right? So, um, like the one where the um, woman had burnt hands, and yeah. she'd um, her husband was accused of stealing mm -hmm. a bunch of money, and so. Yeah. The money, there was money found under the bed, and she thought, well, he must have done it. And she lied about right. where he was. The like she was. These in things happen. Yeah, that's right. And but he'd been abusive to her, so it was a good way for her to get him away from her. And mm. right. And so then all of a sudden she's being sent money from somebody. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, the ki the actual robber would be sending her money. Hmm. And then it turns out that the. Um, now, spoiler alert! You might be giving this one away, right? Oh, yeah, I would totally give it away. So just give him a chance to turn it off. Okay. No, so anyway, go for it. there was um, a guy from where was he from Trinidad, I think. Anyway. Some sort so of the West Indies uh, or Jamaica or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So he's um, he's killed the the guy. He's actually the one who. Hmm. You think that? Yeah, it's probably him. 
and you're like, oh, the guy uh, who died, everyone really is a suspect so. because the guy who died, he's an absolute, you know, villain. He's he's nobody would like him, and he's such a grumpy bad guy, right? That he's uh, in these sort of shows that aren't yeah. very good. The you can see who are the bad guys. Yeah, he's got a thin yeah. face and he's bald. So <laughs> well, okay. So anyway, that's not it. So it said he was grumpy and stuff, and he was he lashing was, out at was everyone, and so everyone would have a motive. So, mm. but anyway, so this guy, really, you could say, well, he was the robber, and he's paying this woman off, and the man who died found out about this. And that's a way better story than what they ended up with. So, um, just go with my right. Oh, that was one of the worst murder mysteries I've ever seen. Yeah, it was Because so the police would never, ever buy the explanation the given for it, like the totally accidental not. sort of thing. Yeah. They would never buy it, even if it happened. That guy would have been railroaded and sent to the gallows. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. anyway. Uh, and Father Brown, he gambles in this. They're breaking and entering into people's houses. It's incredible. All the time. All the time. Every, yeah. So. Um, and this little place. Yeah. There's a murder Tiny every week. Village and it's, wow. The crime rate, like, wouldn't make Honduras look. And understand, I'm not stereotyping Honduras or anything like that. It's got the highest homicide rate in the world. 90 out of 100,000. So, uh, hmm. probably shouldn't be joking about it, but... Someone's got to do something about it. Okay, so we're getting back to human perception. I'm going to check to see how much time I have on that camera. Oh, I think I have enough time to flip through it. So, this is the second disc. So I'm going to go through uh, three hours in about five minutes. Lecture 7, electromagnetic spectrum or visual perception is of specific wavelengths of energy. There are many more wavelengths of energy that we don't see. The experience of color is all in your head. White-gray reflects a mix of all colors equally. Most humans are trichromats. Colorblind people see colors but are dichromats, like Weird. dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. Pattern of responses from the three types of cells determines what color we see. We don't have cells that perceive particular shades of colors. Um, short cones prefer blue light. Long cones prefer reddish light. Medium length cones prefer greenish light. That's because of the length of the wavelengths, I bet. Red has longer wavelengths. Mm. For light mixing, red plus green equals yellow. Mixing light is additive mixing, whereas mixing paint is subtractive mixing. Paint, blue, absorbs yellow, plus yellow, which absorbs blue, equals green. Since the blue plus the yellow have been subtracted out, we see the green. Um, I did not see a properly colored American flag in. I'm not, the examples that he's showing, I don't know what, if it's my TV, I don't know if it's my brain that's not working properly. Be the TV. I, I see the numbers with the, like, I'm obviously a trichromat. I, I have no problem seeing the, I can have a driver's license and stuff. So anyway. Um, Do they actually test for that? I seem to remember they did. I think they should, but, you know. Um, I did not see the flag. The bl black lines got fuzzy and wavy while watching the white dot in the middle. And then I saw, um, once that disappeared, I saw a purple patch in the corner of a pink flag. It didn't work at all for me. The lights that reflected will be tinted as the same color as that which is emitted. Most commercial light lacks bluish light. Indoor light is greenish. Natural light bathes us in white light, wide range of spectrum. Lecture 8. People who look good seem also to smell good to us. If food looks good to us, it tastes better. We have a proportional sense of olfaction. A heavier object compared to a slightly heavier object is tough to detect the difference, whereas a slightly heavier light object is easier to detect the difference from a light object. So it's uh, proportional, and that's not only for um, sense of smell, it's for sensing weight, right? So anyway, uh, androgenol androgeno? is only smelled by 10% of people. It's chemical. 
Um, people who were raised with exposure to pigs smell this. So I would smell it because I, w when I was a little gaffer, I was running around playing in, with the pigs so most <coughs> most days. It was out there. What's um, that, a man smell? What is it? Andros means man, right? I don't know, but only 10% of people smell it. Okay. Um, this works with other chemicals also. Our nose learns new scents, so lock and key sensations unique to olfaction. So a scent molecule is shaped a certain way, and it must find a receptor which has the shape that it can fit into. Um, these are interpreted by the amygdala as emotion. Emotional memories are encoded as olfaction. Retronasal olfaction through throat. Most of our taste, smell, is through this type of olfaction. Flavor is tied to other senses. Lecture 9. Ears sense high frequency vibrations. Amplitude of pressure changes correspond to loudness. Frequency of vibration correspond to pitch. We can hear quiet sounds. High pitches have to be very loud for us to hear them. If guitar strings are tuned to the same note, sympathetic vibration occurs. If one is plucked, the other vibrates, even though it wasn't plucked. Auditory cortex is in middle portion of brain. Tonotopic map, different parts hear different sounds. Uh, expert musicians have larger, more precise tonotopic maps. Um, there is no color out in the world. There are wavelengths. There is no sound out in the world. It's all in our heads. Both vision and sound have what uh, versus where sections in the brain. These two systems in the brain listen to sound in very different ways, but they work together. Sound travels one mile per second, but this isn't too fast for our brains to track. Head-related transfer system, dynamic and flexible over time, only able to substitute going to with gonna when what follows is a verb. I'm gonna work now, but not I'm gonna New York. Ph phonemes, 47 different sounds are present in the English language. Speech begins with diaphragm, air is pressed through throat and past vocal cords. Singers have more control over the vocal cords. There are statistical mechanisms involved with speech perception. Our brain develops expectations of how the words will end. We perceive a rainbow of distinct bands, stripes. This is not what exists, exists, but our brain has categorized colors this way. Sound is also categorized by our brain. We are born with a very fle flexible language system, but it becomes less flexible. Visual ga with audio ba, experience da, even though da was nowhere in the recording. McGurk effect. Ga is built up pressure at back of mouth. Ba is built up pressure at front of mouth. Da is built up pressure at middle of mouth. So that's why that works out that way. Um, touch perception is determined by many different types of touch receptors, cold versus warm receptors. If you heat neurons to a point where they're about to be destroyed, there's a sudden burst. Thermal grill illusion, two forks, one cold, one warm, intertwined tines, and touch lightly to skin. We'll perceive it as intensely hot, even though nothing is intensely hot, and no damage is occurring to skin. Kids first use uh, mouths to understand things, but eventually stop putting everything in their mouths. Camera placed behind subject, gives subject the view of the back of their head, and the subject can get an out-of-body experience of touch when somebody's messing with them. You should watch that part, it's really interesting. Uh, lecture 12, pain, nociceptive, inflammatory, and neuropathic pain. Nociceptive, extreme heat, pressure, etc. can cause experience as pain. Inflammatory, if you exercise a lot, you get this. Blood flow increases to damaged area. This causes swelling and pressure in surrounding areas. These signals serve as reminders that you need to stop using this area while it's under repair. Neuropathic pain results from 